Okay, so welcome to today's video. So 2022 is nearly upon us and it's time for some tech predictions for the year ahead of us. Both positive and of course there will of course be negative tech predictions in this video. Uh, so let's go ahead and uh, why don't we talk about this. So uh, my first prediction is that under the screen front facing cameras will become much more popular next year and will truly become more mainstream because we have already seen this uh, kind of under screen uh, tech become more mainstream with companies like Samsung adopting it uh, with their folding phones but right now currently uh, those are very high-end phones and it, it will be cool uh, and we'll probably see uh, a lot more lower end phones even mid uh, like mid price tier phones and eventually budget phones that uh, actually have under the screen uh, the cameras and they're much more mainstream so instead of the main focus being the under the screen camera uh, instead of it being kind of an innovation uh, it's going to be more of a just an extra feature that's added on top of uh, of more of your ordinary phones really uh, so that will be definitely cool because of course the notch, I don't really like the notch, I don't really like the hole punch or it, even the motorized cameras were a bit gimmicky. Uh, so it would be cool to see these under the screen uh, selfie cameras actually kind of take over uh, because it will definitely be the next logical evolution of the uh, selfie camera. So as well as the under the screen front facing uh, selfie camera, be becoming more popular. I also predict that eSIM will finally become more mainstream. So we've seen eSIM uh, compatibility in iPhones for a few years now. Uh, the all the different pixels all have uh, support. I'm pretty sure the Samsung phones have support as well. Most mid price tier phones, uh, high end phones, and even some budget phones have eSIM, which is really cool. But I don't think it's really had that much popularity because uh, it isn't really a massive innovation and most people honestly don't care about it because like most people don't care whether they have a digital or physical SIM card uh, because it doesn't really affect day-to-day -day usage. Uh, having an eSIM doesn't really instantly make your experience with your phone better. Uh, however, next year there may be more phones with only eSIM and I think that's what would make it kind of break through as a technology and become mainstream and uh, popular because it's a really good feature. I mean, uh, you don't really want to have to swap SIM cards constantly if you want to swap uh, providers but just out, of, uh, just out of convenience and of course protecting the environment because all of those uh, pla those uh, SIM cards will definitely not be doing any good for the environment so yeah and of course there are now rumours that uh, Apple may be actually making a phone with only eSIM uh, in the future so that would definitely be a, a, a kind of way to make people switch to eSIM and I think it's just inevitable that everybody will eventually switch over to this eSIM technology uh, but I think it's just a matter of time now. So of course this year YouTube has deplatformed a number of creators uh, on uh, YouTube obviously. Uh, so uh, of course for many justified reasons. However there are cases where YouTube's uh, bots and uh, yeah have deplatformed people for no justified uh, reason and or maybe they've made the wrong call and in next year I don't feel like the amount of these cases will actually go down of people being deplatformed and demonetized even though they've done nothing wrong uh, I feel like this is a big problem but I don't think there'll be any solutions uh, when it comes to Google because when it comes to deplatforming people they're always going to 
uh, air on the side of deplatforming people or, or demonetizing them when it comes to uh, their like making advertisers happy and not upsetting them and of course the main way that uh, Google makes money is advertisers so they need to make sure that they don't uh, ditch the platform and uh, it makes a very kind of bad environment when it comes to uh, the fact that if you're slightly off what Google wants, uh, they can just deplatform you, uh, because of course if it isn't what advertisers want, then uh, it might no longer be on YouTube. Uh, so I think that will definitely continue with, um, of course, heading into the midterms in the US and stuff. Uh, of course, this will probably just ramp up even more than it already has. So, uh, it's good to be on platforms like LVRY where there's no threat of being censored. Uh, so, yeah, so of course, I'll continue posting there. And uh, and YouTube's still a good place, but I also like Liboy, and I think it's probably my, uh, it's my favourite uh, like video platform right now. So we have seen Odyssey uh, this year become its own company and I feel that in the next year we will uh, see the effect of that and maybe see it become more corporate. Now this is one of my, uh, this is as well as the YouTube deplatforming people, this is another kind of prediction that I hope doesn't happen but I uh, feel it is more than likely. Uh, so Odyssey has kind of shown in the past that uh, that they're changing in corporate direction uh, when it comes to being a new independent company has definitely uh, been uh, kind of shown in posts that they've made so one post that they made basically said that they are they're not a free speech platform but they do err on the side of free speech the majority of the time uh, so they said they wanted creative people to be free to express their creativity on Odyssey so that's a bit more of a kind of corporate way of describing things it definitely shows the change in direction of uh, Odyssey when it comes to being a bit more corporate. Uh, I definitely think that it could be better than being more corporate when it comes to things like their Twitter account because right now uh, every month or two uh, they cause a controversy that splits the community or might split the community uh, or they do something stupid and I wish they wouldn't uh, do that kind of marketing. I wish the uh, CEO wouldn't do that. But uh, I, hopefully they uh, stop um, doing this kind of marketing that's very counterproductive. Uh, so yeah, uh, but of course, uh, it, yeah, it would just be great to see them change their marketing direction to be a bit more positive instead of the, uh, the current marketing. So this may be less of a prediction and more of a aided prediction because <laughs> it's more of a guarantee that uh, the supply shortage will continue uh, next year, probably get a bit better but not a lot better so uh, mainly sil so mainly silicon uh, of course there's been a shortage of silicon when it comes to uh, electronics so uh, that might get a bit better but uh, we're not exactly sure right now uh, of course it isn't going to get drastically better because these uh, supply shortages are going to definitely continue because of that massive shift from uh, from the offices to work uh, from home and kind of more of a shift towards technology. Of course uh, all the lockdowns that countries all around the world have went through has definitely contributed to this supply shortage from people buying new tech products which is a uh, call cool, uh, uh, to factories shutting down because of staff uh, shortages which actually 
uh, was mainly earlier in the pandemic because they've, I believe they've got a bit of a handle on that now, which is cool. So, of course, uh, there were some products which uh, will be more available next year, but uh, a lot of smaller ventures may be a bit squeezed when it comes to the uh, components and especially silicon. So, uh, I don't think it's going to be very good uh, when it comes to that, but I guess. Uh, 2020 uh, and 2021 have been bad years when it comes to the shortage. Uh, so I guess it could, it will probably get better. Uh, so yeah. So overall, I am hopeful for the next upcoming year in technology, and I hope uh, for a good 2022. I hope you have a good 2022 uh, out there. So yeah. So if you enjoyed, then you can hit the subscribe button. If you uh, enjoyed and you wanted to show your support, you can click the like button. And you can also uh, share this video if you uh, like the predictions. So yeah, of course you can hit the bell uh, when it comes to subscribing on uh, LBRY or YouTube. Because if you hit the bell then you'll definitely see my videos. And uh, of course at the end of the year I'll review my predictions from uh, of course this year. Uh, so that will be fun when it comes around to doing that uh, so you can subscribe for that you can also just subscribe for my normal tech content and I'm out